All right, guys, welcome back to another episode, another great week of college baseball in the books and coming up. Uh, We're already a little bit in. We've had some Friday games going on as we're here recording on a Saturday, but Colby, good things coming. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, we've had some Saturday games too. Uh, Fairfield's playing right now, but it's, I'm glad to be back. Um, Well, your team's getting back to rolling this weekend. Yes. Um, Fairfield is on an absolute warpath. Um, Vandy's getting back up there. Arkansas had a little bit of a skid, you could call it. Um, Pitt, great team. BC, great team. There's a lot of teams we got to talk about this week. Oh, yeah, we'll get into all of it. And let's just say it is a refreshing sight to see UConn coming back after the longest two weeks of my life. (laughs) I'm sure. So the top 25, this is as of 419, so Monday. Um, Arkansas was still sitting at number one. We'll see how that goes after this weekend, but... They came into the week at 30 and six, Um, Vandy coming in at two, Texas at three, same day we've had the last two weeks, nothing too surprising, Mississippi State four, Texas Tech at five. Um, You know, it's about what we've come to expect at this point of the season. It's going to be a ping pong battle at one and two between Vandy and Arkansas, but both great teams and, um, you know, an up and down week for the two of them. Yeah, great teams. Uh, The biggest slide we saw was Ole Miss down to 12 from six. But that was just a product of playing Vandy. If Vandy does the same this weekend to Mississippi State, you'll see them slide, even though we know they're a top five team. Yeah, and uh, Ole Miss is not having a great weekend against LSU right now. We'll get into that a little later. But you could see them sliding even more, unfortunately, for those Rebels. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if you said this, but no one dropped out. It was the same 25 teams. Uh, I know Fairfield got, I think, 25 votes in the coaches' poll, so... They were 33 this this week. You could see them at top 25 if they keep winning like this. I mean, you win every game of the season. It's hard to do much better than that. So Yeah. The people are complaining about the schedule. Well, obviously, they're not playing an SEC schedule. They also don't have – they're not playing an SEC talent, so it's different. So it's like, don't complain. They're, they're winning the games they're supposed to. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That's all you can ask for. Yeah. Um... Seems like they might have outgrown the MAC at this point, but that's a discussion for the summer, I suppose. Yeah, well, we'll come to the Big East. Yeah, Big East is getting better. Hey, that's cool. We're more on the East Coast than Xavier. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know how a team in Cincinnati ends up in a conference named after the East, but sure, let's go. I guess Villanova's in there too, and they're not really East Coast, but they're closer. I guess so. Yeah, Pennsylvania is kind of like that borderline East Coast. No one knows what it is. It's like nothing. <laughs> Sorry, Josh. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's get into it. Um, Vandy, last week, I think it, it was last weekend, they played Tennessee. Yep. Big series, obviously. Vandy's coming into the stretch of just playing top teams. Teams are playing top Vandy. Um, it was a big series. It showed us a few things. One, that Jack Leiter isn't invincible, although he still kind of is, but because he did, he got the no decision. He didn't get the loss, but he's he got hit around a little bit. Three home runs, not not a great stat line. Um, but Tennessee also showed us they have bats, and they got – they got well, except for the first game. They lost 5 nothing to Rocker. But Rocker, his slider was just on point, like it always is. Um, their bats, though, picked up in the last two games – um, and then we saw Vandy's freshman starter, Pat Riley, who there's been questions about around the uh, college baseball landscape of can he be that reliable third starter they need after the two horses? Like if one of them goes down like Rocker did the week before or Leiter did last week, can he be the guy to still win the series in a three-game series in the playoffs? And he showed against Tennessee he can. Now there's still doubts because that was the first time he's really shown dominance. But I believe in him. Yeah, I mean, he's he's at that school for a reason. And the fact that he's a number three starter as a freshman speaks a lot as to how good they believe he is. Um, that was one hell of a series. Tennessee, like you said, they are for real, hanging with that Vanderbilt team. Um, only winning one game, but, you know, it's just like I talked about a few weeks ago with UConn, Texas Tech. That doesn't mean we're a bad team because we got swept. It just means... They were just a little bit better because all those games were tight with, you know, 5 nothing. I guess might not have been, but yeah. that's Kumar Rocker for you. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a good question. I guess, you know, Jake Graham is the only pitcher in baseball that can truly be indestructible. 
But um, yeah, Leiter is is capable of getting hit around, I guess. But I'll take my odds with him any day, nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, th- I thought about this when I was like re- watching the recap. You're not going to beat both of them in a series. So if you can beat one of them, that's a win. Oh, and then it's just – that's why Pat Riley is such a big X factor for Vandy. He's the only question mark on that entire team, I'd say. Yeah. No, that's a great way to put it. You just got to take one against the horses and then go from there. You hope, you know, your odds you can match up 50-50 against Riley and do whatever you can and get the W. Yeah, you got to um, hope his inexperience plays. Yeah. And it was the Vandy Bats on Sunday, too, that picked them up um, after that tough loss on Saturday. They hit 12 hits. Uh, Carter Young, Dominic Keegan, and Parker Nolan all had home runs in that game, kind of cruising to that 10-4 W. But, um, but yeah, all in all, that was a fantastic series, college baseball at its best. And I definitely wouldn't hate it if we got that matchup again in the postseason. No, there's a lot of matchups that I want, but that's the top one for sure. Tennessee's a real team, which we didn't know coming into this. They were just always ranked high, but they didn't have that surefire signature win. Well, they had it against Leiter. And I'd also like to mention um, Jack Bolger and Carter Young are phenoms, and they're insane. Oh, yeah. And Enrique Bradfield patrolling center field, he's ridiculous as well. The catch he made last night. Oh, my God. You got to just clap your hands. That was beautiful. You can't do anything about it. No. He runs so smooth. He really does. Just just a classic Vanderbilt find. Yeah, and so speaking of last night, uh, Kumar, I wouldn't say he was dominant for the entire game. So the f- first inning, he, he gave up a run. The only run he would give up until the ninth, but it was a ground rule double, and then he uh, got a few hard flyouts. Only p- 10 pitches, so it was good, but still, you don't like to see that out of the first inning of your ace. Then he settled in, you know, did what Kumar does. I think he had 10 Ks. Um, 8 Ks, sorry. Yeah, Nine inning pitch. Eight Ks. Yeah. Uh, two runs, one earned. The second one was in the ninth inning with two outs. He got a little hit around, gave up two more hits then. Um, wasn't great in the bottom of the night. I thought they might pull him just from pitch count because he was at like 107 pitches. But mm-hmm. he stayed in there, went the nine, full nine innings and looked back to his dominant self for a majority of that game. Yeah, his fastball was working real good there. Um, just shows the resolve he has that against the number four team in the nation, he can still power through even if he – you know, started off with some hard hit rate. Um, but, yeah, he's he's a special pitcher. And you might have been up and down a little bit, but the man still threw a complete game against a great team, so you got to give him credit for that. Yeah, and, I mean, a great team who beat the number 16 last week in Ole Miss. Um, I'd say looking ahead to that series, tonight it's Lighter, Tomorrow it's Riley, I believe. Um, I don't think Lighter's going to have two bad starts in a row just because that – doesn't seem like it's something he's going to go through. But that Mississippi State lineup is scary. So I wouldn't be surprised. But that's another matchup I want to see in the postseason. If oh, we absolutely. get a College World Series of Mississippi State Vandy, that should get a ton of views. Oh, no doubt. I mean, if it doesn't, then I just don't understand anything. <laughs> yeah, you have to assume later will be really fired up wanting to bounce back from that. And Mississippi State is... 10 and 6 in conference play in the SEC West, uh, 28 and 9 overall. So they're they're forced to be reckoned with. So you got to assume that they'll bounce back after dropping that one to Kumar last night. Yeah, and they're trying to keep pace with Arkansas. And so they got to win they got to win at least one of these. They can't drop all three. Winning yeah. two out of three would be the best, but one one isn't a bad case either. Now you can live with that. Um, let's jump ahead to Arkansas. They're still currently the number one team in the nation. We'll see what happens after, um, you know, this weekend. But they lost two out of three to South Carolina. Um, last night, they really didn't look like the team they've been this year in a 6-2 to two loss down there against the Gamecocks. But, you know, they're a strong team. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and um, they won the first game, um, which had one of the greatest moments of college baseball season so far. Um, Robert Moore, two home runs in the game. He had already hit one when he came up to bat in for the second one. South Carolina fans decided to chant Oompa, Oompa Loompa at him. Don't know why they thought that was a good idea after he'd already hit one bomb. Um, so he decided to hit a no-doubt home run to the right pavilion, right field pavilion, and had what might be the best bat flip we've seen in a very long time. Best bat flip of the season for sure. 
it was almost so subtle that you it was like like he didn't like toss it or anything it was just a little flip but yeah. you knew what it meant no, and no. he stared it oh it was beautiful that was just sexy let's let's just put it that way um yeah i, I don't know where oompa loompa comes from but i guess it's a fun tradition but not when you poke the wrong bear like that and more showed why uh, he is a leader for that Arkansas team. Two home runs taken down that team. Um, but yeah, awesome moment. If anybody out there hasn't seen it, it's all around social media. So you have to go check that out. It's a must watch. Yeah, the, the NCAA uh, College World Series account posted the like low on field 4K view. Oh, oh, that's what I'm trying to get to with Fairfield. But it's not as easy in our park. But that was beautiful. Oh, God. Those are the be- hands down the best ones replicating what MLB has been doing the last few years. Marketing 101 right there. Exactly. Blur out the fans. Oh, it's so great. It's beautiful. Um, so another team that didn't play, um, or their series got can it got canceled, right? Pitt's series got canceled this weekend against Louisville. But they might be another dark horse for a regional. They're kind of on fire ever since we mentioned them a while back. Yeah, um, they hadn't been ranked in the first couple weeks of the season, but now they're on a nice little roll. Um, Taking two out of three from UNC last week. Um, We had been talking about love as the horse for UNC, but if you can beat them, you know, they were ranked for a while. Um, I'm not not sure where they're at right this second, but obviously a strong team if you were in the power rankings at one point. Um, And yeah, unfortunately, COVID happens this is college baseball in 2021 but would have been great to see that louisville series but i agree Pitt is a team you absolutely have to be watching out for yeah i mean louisville just came off that huge series against kentucky basically saying they own kentucky they own the bluegrass state they like to say (laughs) uh i think their caption on their instagram was uh the bluegrass is now red which is great caption. oh that's awesome (laughs) but that's a huge series i mean we would have loved to see if Pitt could hang with them we i think they can They've yeah. pretty much shown that they're they're for real. So I think there's a good chance they're a top 16 team hosting a regional. Yeah, that 20 and 11 record is deceiving, as you can tell by the fact that they're 16 because they've played such good competition so far. So, yeah, I'm a big believer in them. And any regional in the Northeast would be a lot of fun for us in particular. And well, you know, is Pittsburgh in the Northeast like we just talked oh, about? Oh, yeah, that's true. We don't know about them. Um, another Northeast team who's, you know, they obviously got destroyed by UConn a while back, but they just welcomed Notre Dame into their home park and um, decided, hey, we don't want you here much longer. Yeah. 10 nothing win. Um, what they have? 13 hits. Um, they gave up no runs on five hits. Um, but they, had a, they were struggling before this. Um, like we said, since they lost to UConn 12 nothing on March 30th, they're only 4-8, and eight, including yesterday's game at Notre Dame. But I think yesterday's game was a wake-up call. Well, the series before was a wake-up call, and they responded well last night. Yeah, it's, it's been tough sledding for them since, you know, conference play really started ramping up. Um, but, yeah, Notre Dame, the number 10 team in the country, they definitely showed some signs of life in that one. It was 10 nothing win. Uh, Ramon Jimenez had a three-run homer in the third, and then he knocked in another run in the fifth. So he had two hits and four ribbies on the day. Uh, Daniel Baruch, Cody Morissette, and Vince Semini also had two hits. And uh, on the mound, Emmett Sheehan did his job very well um, with 10 strikeouts and just three hits allowed and six and a third. So even though the Eagles record might not look that great, I think it's 16 and 19 or something like that at the moment. Um, they're still a team you got to watch out for. Um, you can't discount what they did early on in the year. And just because it's been tough sledding lately doesn't mean they're not dangerous. Yeah, I think what this showed us is even though it wasn't a close game, it shows how strong college baseball is this year. Obviously, we got Fairfield over in the mid-majors who's just doing everything. But of the Power Five conferences, there's not a single one that's wide open. They're all super close competitions and Big East too. Yeah, BC, like even a team like that that looks like they're in the cellar of the ACC, you can't count them out because look at that, what they just did to Notre Dame. So you're right. Like we've said, it's might be the best season of college baseball ever with all the talent influx there is right now. So you can't count anybody out, and that's the beautiful thing about baseball on a given day. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, the team you had mentioned earlier, LSU, another uh, SEC team who's 
they're doing pretty good. Um, in the SEC, they're six and eleven overall. They're twenty four and fourteen, so not too bad. Um, however, after they lost Jaden Hill to injury, we said we kind of <laughs> counted the Tigers out, as Coach O says, um, "Go Tigers." Um, but as of two thirty today, when we typed up our doc, it's the fourth inning, and they're up eight one on Ole Miss. So. Either Ole Miss is just a – they were a fluky team or LSU is using the motivation behind everyone counting them out and they're just going to go on a war path. Yeah, who knows what's going on there. Um, Thursday, 5-4 to four win and 7-2 to two win on Saturday for the Tigers. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know what's up with Ole Miss. Um, it's, been, it's been a weird couple weeks for them here, um, hitting that little slump. Um, A.J. Lavas really did the job well for uh, LSU. He threw a complete game and struck out six. Took him 126 pitches. He had a few jams because he allowed 10 hits. So obviously still a potent lineup for the Rebels. But um, but yeah, I mean, Lavas hung in there, got the complete game, and the Bats also took care of business. Um, Trey Morgan in the leadoff spot had three hits. Uh, Cade Doughty, um, he had a big blast in the ninth inning with a grand slam that put the game out of reach. So even though they were only 6-11 and 11 in the SEC and, you know, still got a ways to go, LSU is making some noise. They're up to 21 in the RPI. They've had a tough schedule, and they're 14-12 and 12 against top 100 teams in the country. So the SEC, like we've said, it has so many good teams. How many bids are they going to get? Just give them, give every team in the SEC a bid. Why not? Even, you know, Texas A&M is in sixth place. They're 22-17. and 17. That's certainly not a bad record. Um, but the four and eleven in conference play doesn't help. Yeah, I, honestly, I if I'm not wrong, I think they do bids based on the RPI. So I could be wrong about that. So don't take me my word for it. But based on that, they're gonna get a ton of bids. Yeah. I think probably eight or so, six to eight. I'd say is a good number. Yeah, I think absolutely. Um, every team in there is potent, so you can't count any of them out. Maybe. Maybe the only one might be poor Missouri at 12 and 23, 5 and 11 in conference play. But yeah. I guess Auburn as well. They're under 500. But those are the only two teams in all of the SEC under 500, which is just amazing considering how many good ball clubs are there. And we'll get to this later. But if Fairfield ends up hosting a regional, they could very well welcome two SEC teams. And I don't know how I feel about that, but it could happen. Oh, that would be must-see TV. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, Baylor, um, they took down Texas Tech 12-4 last night. At, we know Texas Tech is a good team. That's what they did to UConn. It was no joke, even though UConn's great. Um, they've won. They're very hot, like scolding hot, like my road to the show guy. That's, <laughs> that, that's how hot they are. They're 12 and 4. They've won 12 of their last 14 and are up 11 spots to 39 in RPI. And as we know, RPI, I think, determines the College World Series ranking. Yeah. So. It's it's kind of confusing how they determine it, but because no. yeah, Fairfield's number one, but their strength of schedule is like 110. So I don't know how they. Yeah, really, I, I don't know how RPI did, works. Yeah, Tech, know Tech's a great team at five in the nation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Big time. And Patrick Montverde, he's dominant lefty. Really fun to watch, except when he's facing the UConn Huskies, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he gave up seven runs in four innings. So. Um, you know, that's what you want. They hung six in the first three, I think. So how about Baylor doing that? Um, Tyler Thomas, another lefty, he struck out seven and only gave up four hits in his six innings for Baylor. So that was an impressive outing because that tech lineup is just unstoppable. But holding them to four is impressive. Um, home runs all came from Jack Pineda, Cade Currington, Davian Downey, and Chase Wesner for the Baylor Bears. So very nice go round for them last night. Cade Currington is a very baseball name. I love it. <laughs> it is. Um, so now let's move into our annual monologues, um, or weekly monologues, sorry. Um, so Fairfield, we played a midweek against Quinnipiac, weekend against Monmouth, huge weekend series, and then a midweek against St. Peter's, and we're currently just finishing up game three of our weekend series against Manhattan. So first series against Quinnipiac, there wasn't much to it. Uh, it was our closest game we'd played. But Nick Graybeck went the distance, giving up one unearned run, three hits, one walk, and three Ks. Most impressive part, though, as we talked about a few weeks ago with um, the UConn starter, 
he only went he only needed 72 pitches to get through all seven innings i don't know how that works because it felt like he was at 50 through four so that's impressive or 50 through like three or something it was it was great yeah, a, a great, little bit of the austin peterson magic exactly <laughs> he got some dust or something um we were down to our final six outs, down one in the bottom of the sixth. Uh, Danny Ryan doubled, scored handle, tie game. Mike Buschetti, hard grounder up the middle off the second baseman's glove. They were shifting him um, to score Ryan after he went to third on a wild pitch. That was the winning run. Um, Nick came back out for the seventh, closed the door. Lots of emotion. Um, it was great. Game two of the final uh, four-game set against Quinnipiac. Again, down to our last six outs. They definitely played much better than they did the first uh, midweek uh, Quinnipiac did. Um, the game kind of broke open in the bottom of six. We scored four runs, making it 5-2. Uh, so there was that. Uh, Guerrero walked uh, with ball four being a wild pitch. Strollo scored. Pags singled up the middle, scored two. That was the winning hit. And then Caruso gave us an insurance run with a single down the line. Um, Mike Sansone. Picked up his first career save coming in uh, in the seventh, striking out the side. Starting would be a career week for the, our lefty starter. So then our weekend, big weekend series against Monmouth. This was getting national attention um, because obviously we were at eight, 18 and 0. Or no, 16 and 0. And, you know, you don't do that normally. No. Of course. Uh, game one, Mike Sanson, complete game, five hits, two runs, zero walks, 10K is a career high. That got him Mac and Collegiate Baseball Player of the Week after his uh, striking out the side uh, save on Wednesday. Colin Stroll and Crusoe all had RBI singles. Crusoe's was a bunt single. Great, great bunt. Um, it's so refreshing when guys can get bunts down. Actually, You're better about it in college in the major leagues. Oh, yeah. And he's a catcher. He's a fast catcher, though. But he's not. He just gets good jumps. That's the most important. Um, Game two, Jake Noviel, obviously friend of the show. Great guy. Um, he's going to win Mac Pitcher of the Year in my eyes, um, although that was before this weekend. Um, eight innings pitch, two hits, two runs, two walks, four Ks. Not many Ks like he normally does, but still. And the two runs were scored on a two-run home run in the top of the first. So he just cruised after that, allowing one hit, two walks. Was it Whip that he's leading the country in right now? Yeah, his whip before this weekend was 0. 0.64. I had a That's jack lighter. Unreal. That's unreal. Yeah, I know. Who And he's he hasn't pitched as many innings, but still, that's insane. Yeah. To have a below one whip anyway is insane. Um, The most impressive part of that outing, I'd say, was I looked up at the end of the eighth, or at the end of the seventh. He came back out at the eighth, and I'm like, Oh, he's still in. This is new. Finished the eighth. He looked, he was fired up. He was, he wasn't losing any of his steam. He didn't come in in the ninth, obviously, but because of pitch count, he was at 107 pitches or something, but it definitely felt like he could. And I know I texted you. I was like, yeah, he only went eight, but like only, he could went, eight. only, yeah, only went eight, but he was dominant. It was because of the six-run game. We didn't need him to keep pitching. Yeah, was, you don't need to kill yourself there. Exactly. It's early, still kind of early with comparison to when playoffs are, so you can't, especially when you're up like that. Um, most thrilling game of the year thus far for Fairfield in an imaginable season. Maybe in college baseball, if it had gotten more in national spotlight. Um, John Signor, six and two-thirds, six hits, three runs, two earned, one walk and nine Ks. Um, wasn't a great outing. Wasn't a bad outing either. He, he's he been fighting through pain all year, but it was great. Uh, and then Eli Oliphant came in in a great relief effort to finish off the top half of the seventh in a tie game. Uh, his final pitch set the stage for the biggest hit of the year for Mike Caruso and maybe of his four years as a stag. Um, first pitch, bottom of the seventh. Mike Caruso, his, his eyes, you could just see lit up. Pitch right over the heart of the plate, launched it over the scoreboard in left field, might have gone 6,000 feet. But it, it was a no doubt. He just watched it fly. And if you've seen any of the college baseball Instagrams, our, our Instagram, 
or Fairfield's Instagram, I mean, uh, you've seen this home run. It was just a moonshot. It was awesome. He was so happy. We were all so happy. It was great to see. Um, and then in game four, a more normal game. I guess that's what you could call it. Starter, Bryson Caparo. Top ERA in the uh, MAC, 0.51. He went six and two-thirds, two hits, one run, which was unearned. Three walks and six Ks. Great, great outing by him. Um, got into a little trouble in the bottom of the or top of the seventh. Uh, so Jason Hebner came in to finish off the inning, and then Eli Oliphant came in and threw uh, one and a third innings of no hit, no runs, no nothing. Uh, ball. Nick Graybeck came in for the final two outs to close out the game and complete the sweep of second place Monmouth, pushing us uh, Fairfield into the national spotlight. D1 baseball, college baseball hub, everyone's writing about us now. It's great. Um, also want to give a shout out to sophomore Ryan Strollo. First home run of his collegiate clear career gave Fairfield the 4-1 lead that we would never give up. Um, then midweek this past Wednesday against St. Peter's, game one, 20-2. It was 20-0 going into the bottom of the seventh. We just It was our first away game. I mean, there's not much else you can say about that. No. They forfeited game two. Now, Hunter's telling me that they only had three pitchers and 17 total players. That's why they forfeited? Oh, that's what Kendall Rogers told well, me. <laughs> that's what Kendall Rogers told you. I'm saying it's because they they were scared to play us. They didn't want to play us before the series originally got canceled. They were only trying to play two. So Yeah, I think that score speaks for itself. Oh, yeah. Um, now, this weekend, uh, it was a Friday, Saturday because of rain possible tomorrow in Manhattan. Um there's also a new D1 baseball article showing some love to us because uh, they sent out one of their guys to watch the games yesterday and report on it. Yeah, it's Eric a great Sorensen. article. The article's called It's a Stag Party in the Big Apple. So go check that out. Give him some love. I mean, you know, we get better coverage here on the podcast, but, you know, it's nice to see that national attention too. Oh, yeah, big time. We're, we're not national yet. We'll get there, though. With You're the right. Yeah. Uh, game a lot one. more attention the last few days, though. Yeah. No, it's been it's been great. Um, game one, 16 to four. Mike Sansone, six innings, five hits, two runs, no walks, five Ks. Tristan Ramon um, came in to finish it off. Mike Handel, six RBIs, including two home runs. One was a three three bagger or three, yeah, three runs. And he had a tri RBI triple. Great day for him, career day. Um, Justin, friend of the show, he got back to his ways of hitting his ninth homer of the year. Um that was the big scoring. Game two, Jake had a pedestrian day by his standards. Only five innings, seven hits, two runs, one walk, and eight Ks. Um, he only went five innings because of a high pitch count. He was already at, I think, 90 pitches by then. So they had to, they just had to pull him. But it, was, it wasn't a bad day. It just wasn't a great day. Uh, Mike Bichetti hit his second home run of the year, three-run shot. So the offense picked him up, uh, even though Jake didn't have a bad day, like I said. Um, game three literally just ended like two minutes ago. Final score is 19 to nine. Um, Justin began the scoring hit a three one blast, three run blast in the first, his 10th. He's catching up to the national leaders who have played like 20 more games than him. So that's impressive. Um, Fairfield scored six more in the second and six more in the third. Um, so, and then the fourth, they scored one, the sixth, they scored three. That's the 19 runs. Um, John Signor, who had come in with a 0.81 ERA, I believe, um, only went four and two thirds, 106 pitches, and gave up nine earned runs. Not a great day, but like I said, he's been playing through stuff. So hopefully he can get back to his ways next weekend. Um, the bats, oh, they stayed alive, like I said, and we won 19, uh, 19 to nine. Game four is going to start in about half an hour. Keep a lookout on that. Uh, the Stags look to go 26 and 0 in that game uh, which would be here yeah, unreal um you know i needed home run derby by the way of college baseball between justin guerrero and wes clark <laughs> hey he hasn't hit a home run in a while yeah watch out but, yeah justin just got added to uh the like best hitters watch list too i don't, I don't know what it's called but he yeah, got added i don't know how he wasn't there before but yeah but hey whatever He's there now. He's not, even, he's not even our best hitter. It's a, that's the most impressive part. That's... Mike, Han Mike Handel's batting 430 right now, I think. He has 42 hits, if I'm not wrong, through 25 games. 
That's not bad. <laughs> no, that's almost two hits a game. Yeah. It's not bad. No. Nope. Justin's only batting like 379. Not great. Only. Oh. Only. So Bad unimpressive. 500 after the first two weeks. Um, so now we talk about RPI like we've been saying throughout the show. Fairfield's still number one. A lot of SEC fans, not necessarily Arkansas either. They're kind of being good about it. But a lot of SEC fans are like, oh, they shouldn't be number one. They've played nobody and all this and that. And I'm just looking at the Instagram, seeing all these comments, and I'm like, yeah, but we've play- we've won the games we've played. And even if it was an SEC team, if an SEC team went 26 and all or 25 and all, like that'd be just as impressive. It's yeah. SEC talent against SEC talent. This is Mac talent against Mac talent. We exactly. just have to be better. All these games are blowouts too. I mean, everyone you're saying you're scoring double digit runs. So doing absolutely everything in your power to rise those rankings. And I think deservedly so. Yeah, over our last Four games, I think we've scored 50 runs. That's not bad. No. Um, and then I had mentioned this earlier, um, the possibility that we could host a regional. On the latest D1 baseball podcast again, um, they mentioned the idea that if Fairfield wins out and goes undefeated for the regular season, which is looking more likely by the minute because we only have one series left after this, um, they could host a regional. They mentioned the two places were, were in Norwich, which is like, 20 minutes from here, they get on minor league park and then Yankee Stadium, which um, if that happened, I mean, like that's the, that's just I, I don't even know what to say. There are no words. Like, yeah, you play in Yan- like Mike Bichetti, he went to Stepanak, and they played in Yankee Stadium for their championship. Um, but this is like college regionals. This is oh, whole yeah. level. That's big time. I yeah. mean, you think TD Ameritrade is special, but Yankee Stadium is is another level. It's Yankee Stadium. I don't yeah. care if it's a new one either. It's Yankee Stadium. No, just just those two words, you know, they speak for themselves. It's and... like probably, what, six parks that if you're playing in it, it's like surreal. Yeah. Fenway, Yankee Stadium. Um, Wrigley, Dodger Wrigley, Stadium. Dodger Stadium, probably the Giants too, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Just because it's California. Oh, it's such a beautiful park, yeah. Yeah, um, there's definitely one more. Well, now the Braves' new stadium. You're mm-hmm. playing there. That's pretty big. But that's Great. not historic. Cardinals is historic. Yeah. Even Pittsburgh's kind of historic, even though they suck. Well, Pittsburgh is, you know, one of the crown jewel stadiums in the league, too. It's You can kind of say the same thing about Pittsburgh and Baltimore in that respect. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, it's just the areas, obviously. Yeah. But still, um, you're playing but there. Yeah, that would be incredible to have a regional there and I, I would love one for UConn we'll see what happens but right now Fairfield is sitting in the catbird seat with that record so it would yeah. certainly be justified if they got it yeah not everyone would think so but hey well, they don't have a say yeah no nope. fans opinions don't really matter too much unfortunately for them nope um so UConn yeah, unfortunately, I uh, I can't go too much of a monologue this week, considering after it's you know it's been a two week COVID pause. The last time we played was a while ago against Georgetown. Um, the good news is that most of the players who are in the protocol are now coming out of it for our series at Xavier. Um, we're getting pretty much everyone back. There's like one or two exceptions, but for the most part, we should be back at full strength after a week of putting some work in. I'll tell you, it was surreal that last game against Georgetown. Just looking down at the bullpen seeing literally all of our pitchers throwing because they knew that they'd be in quarantine for a little while and couldn't get any work in. Um, So everybody was trying to get a bullpen in those last few innings. Meanwhile, Austin Peterson was just mowing people down and throwing like 70 pitches through seven innings. But Yeah, that's just insane. (laughs) um, And the Xavier series now got pushed to Sunday through Tuesday because of, you know, a combination of a lot of factors, weather, travel logistics, all that. So that unfortunately meant the midweek round two against BC got canceled, which would have been a really fun game. Um, But it is what it is. You have to do the best you can. Um, In the inner squads this week, the hitters were taking some good swings. They looked like they haven't really skipped a beat. So hopefully there won't be too much of a problem this weekend. Uh, The one thing is Xavier has some really good starting pitching. Um, Lane Flam and Nick Sawak, he's a big lefty. That's definitely a strength of their ball club. So if we can beat their starting pitching, 
then we shouldn't have too much trouble beating them. We'll see. Um, I don't want to sound like cocky in saying that, um, but <laughs> it's a team that's 14 and 15. Um, records can be deceiving because they're five and two in the Big East, but um, especially they started off the year taking two out of three at Texas A&M. So that's something to keep an eye on. But I'm confident in what we can do. Um, you know, right now we're second in the Big East, but that's only because we haven't played enough games. Actually, I think it's a tie for first because both us and Creighton have a uh, 1,000 winning percentage in the conference. Um, that's why that series would have been so important, but it is what it is. Um, so, yeah, that's a shame, but. Uh, in their tune-ups on Monday, Austin Peterson and Joe Simeone each threw two innings, looked strong, um, looked like the guys we know they are. So that was refreshing to see. The rest of the pitchers would just either throw in an inning or get in a bullpen in. Most of the relievers threw some clean innings. Um, so, yeah, looking like the UConn Huskies in those inner squads. Can't give too much away. But, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who's lined up for the weekend? Uh, it should be the usual slate of guys. Um, Kasparius and his dominant self. Mm -hmm. Probably good for him to give his arm a little bit of a rest because we've been riding him hard as our Friday night guy for good reason because he's just insane with what he nice. brings to the table with that wipeout sinker, um, two-seamer, whatever you want to call it. I That's can't classify them in the same him basket. And, uh, him and Pat were named to the D1 baseball top 100 uh, prospects. Yeah. Um, it's a big deal. Them, and Kayla Borster, all guys that we could see drafted this year. Kyler Fedko. Um, Surprised he wasn't on there, but he might have like just been on the cusp missing out because um, he's had hell of a season. His average yeah. is way up there, and he's hit some absolute bombs as well. Um, but, yeah, the Big East is, is a competitive conference. Um, Seton Hall in third place behind us. They're 6-2 and two in conference play. Xavier's in fourth place right now. Um, St. John's a team that was pegged to be one of the better ones in the conference. They're 12 and 10 overall, but only three and five in the big East. Um, and then another team, some people I've been talking about because they were up there in RPI rankings is Villanova. Um, the 13 and nine record looks good, but then when you look at the conference play one and seven, it's like, okay, well, that's, that's a little bit more of what we expected from them. It's more sorry, like, guys. how did they win? How did they win those 12 games? <laughs> that's the bigger question. Yeah, their strength of schedule wasn't really amazing at the start of the season, if we're being honest. So the Big East play has been a little bit of a wake-up call for them. But they still can't be discounted because they've had some good arms, and starting pitching is always king. So I'm not going to, not gonna, you know, crap on them too much because I don't want to uh, give us any bad mojo when we go down to Philly in a few weeks to take them on. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't. Um. Yeah, no, I, I think this weekend should be a good series for UConn. Uh, might be tough getting back after the COVID pause, but you said most of the guys are back, so that's a big deal. It's a good thing. Yeah, it was it was definitely good for our pitchers and good for Pat Winkle, too, after uh, Kieran Deveni had been injured for a few weeks. He was catching every inning of every game, <laughs> of which he's just an absolute horse for that. Uh, yeah, no, that's impressive. But Kieran was, he was back this week taking some BP, so hopefully – he should be able to give Pat a little breather because it'll be quite the haul of four games in three days of getting back at it, doubleheader tomorrow. So um, that's that's a nice luxury to have two catchers like most teams normally would. But, you know, when you have injuries in college baseball, it's not like you can go out and make a trade. So you have to do the best you can with what you have in-house. Yeah, exactly. It's like we said with Fairfield, you do what you can. Yeah. Don't worry about the criticisms. Exactly. And thankfully, everybody everybody survived. So we're, we're looking like the Yukon Huskies again. Yeah. Um, so on to the MLB. We had mentioned earlier DeGrom being invincible. Um, he proved that again last night. I don't know if anyone saw, but he went nine innings, two hits, um, no earned runs. He also had two hits himself. <laughs> His average is now over uh, 500. It's over like 545 or something, right? Yeah, it's, I think it's 545, 553, something like that. <laughs> um, they won Casually six. Actually, struck out 15 nets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Struck out 15 in seven. He didn't have strikeouts in the final two innings either. He didn't, I think he didn't allow, he set down the last 14 guys or something like that. It's early, 
But right now, he's my National League MVP. It's been a while since they've had a pitcher win an MVP. I think it was Verlander in 2011's the last one I can think yeah, of. But, I think so. man, he deserves that. It's it's just unreal. Yeah, so my first thought was, this is the first time the Mets have ever scored runs, and basically it was because of yeah, he started the rally. Um, my other thing is, and we'll get – we're going to transition to this. He might win MVP, but I'm not sure he's going to win Cy Young because we got this other pitcher in the NL who's doing something even more historic. It's, yeah. No, we'll, we'll just get into it now. Corbin Burns, you are a monster. Um, I, was, I was smart enough to draft him in fantasy baseball because he's getting me a lot of points so far. I didn't even know he was their ace. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> he had but, a strong year last year, but he has just gone to another world in 2021. Yeah, I think he had like a 2.21 ERA or something. So, like, people thought it was coming. Mm-hmm. This is something I've never seen. Yeah, he has, before his, I don't know when his next start is, but he's at 40K, is no walks. No walks. 0.37 ERA, I believe. I think so. Yeah, because the ground's at 0.31. <laughs> and I think they're one and two. It's, it's just unreal. The year of the pitcher, the phrase has never looked better than it has now. Um, but yeah, that the Milwaukee rotation with uh, Freddie Peralta as their number three starter is making a nice impact too. So you got Burns, Woodruff, Peralta. You know, if they, just if need they the bats. win that division or come in as a wild card team, you got to watch out for them because even if they're not <laughs> hitting that well, that starting pitching will just shove. Pitching wins in October, as we know from Red Sox teams, Giants teams of the past. Pitching wins you the games. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Every Bumgarner start, he wins, essentially. Yeah. Now, he's a different breed, but still. There's only one person that's not true for, and he's the man we just talked about a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, win-losses don't count for Jacob DeGrom. But, yep. no, I think there's His a very... shutout usually isn't enough for the poor Mets. Yeah, I think they were afraid to take him out because they didn't want the bullpen to blow a 6-0 lead. I think that's, I mean, that's my theory. If I were Luis Rojas, I'd, I'd think the same thing. Yeah, I but I seriously think he could win MVP, although Acuna's still there and Acuna's nasty. So there, I think, but I don't. If Burns keeps this up, which I'm not sure he can, but if he can, because we know Degrom's gonna do it, one of those two guys isn't gonna win Cy Young, and it's gonna suck. Mm. Unless they do co Cy Youngs or something. <laughs> if there's ever a year, go ahead. But this is the year, I guess. <laughs> um, speaking of Acuna. The only thing that can slow him down apparently is an abdominal abdominal injury. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, it didn't look great, but also when you hurt your like abs, it hurts a lot in the moment. Oh yeah. Even when you're working out abs, it hurts. It mm-hmm. sucks. But so hopefully he can come back this weekend or midweek. Um, yeah, the Braves are kind of a weird team right now. Acuna has been unreal. Freddie Freeman's Freddie Freeman, but. 9-10 and 10 record for the high expectations we had for them. Granted, there's a ton of baseball to go, and I have a lot of faith that they're going to turn that around. But the NL East, every team except the Mets is under 500 right now, which is a surprise. Um, might just speak to the quality of that division. But it was a weird series in the Bronx between the Braves and the Yankees this week. Neither of them really scored much. Uh, the pitching was pretty good. Um, Charlie Morton did his thing, but they couldn't even win that game. So, you know. You look for them to break out of it soon, but the NL East hasn't been what we expected so far. Yeah, I think a big factor is Swanson and Albies getting back to their ways of last year. Very true. Now, Albies was insane last year. Swanson wasn't amazing, but he was... Had the best year of his like, career. Yeah, if he can be... It was the first time he's, like, broken out, too. Yeah. I'd say if he can be a 250 hitter in the... As, like, the fifth five hole or something, they're going to win a lot of games. Yeah, that's they don't need him to be a superstar, but they just need him to be a presence in that lineup because what he does in the field makes up for it because he's amazing out there. It's like Brandon Crawford. That's what yeah. he is. No, definitely. You can't complain about one that. One of the key cogs of those Giants teams. Yeah, I agree. Um, no, but their top three, if Albies wakes up, is uh, Acuna, Albies, Freeman. And then you got Ozuna if he decides to wake up too. Yeah, he's another one that's been a little bit underperforming so far. Um, didn't get signed till late in the offseason, so maybe some teams had some concerns, but he was great yeah. for the Braves last year. So 
Yeah, maybe it's because he has to play the field this year. I don't know. But they're That's one just through what five. I was about to say. He's got to get used to putting a glove on his hand again. <laughs> they're one through five. The only team I can think of that really rivals them, maybe the Padres, but the Dodgers. Although the Dodgers aren't heading either right now. No. We'll get into that in a few minutes. But their bats are very underwhelming for the last cold. week or so. Ice cold. I'm loving it, though. Um, the other injury I wanted to speak of uh, was Trout. He got hit in the elbow. It was kind of like Posey when he got hit in the elbow, but Trout seemed to be a little worse because it wasn't a changeup. Um, so that's really the only thing slowing down the two uh, MVP favorites right now, I'd say. Um, they're both leaders in war. Um, I'd have to assume they're going to fi finish leaders in war by a substantial margin, too. Yeah, Mike Trout, after his season of hitting 283 or something, he said that he sucked. So he's <laughs> been on a war path to bounce back from that. Um, and he's, he's being Mike Trout so far, but yeah, um, played through it for a few innings the other night, then came out of the game and is now taking a seat the last two days. Um, Angels are waiting for Rendon to get back too. That'll make a big difference. Yeah. Um, I think he comes out in an elbow guard next time too, but I mean, it would definitely make the most sense. Yeah. Um, right. Angels sitting at nine and nine right now, hanging in there. That AL West is quite the division right now. Uh, Houston West started off the year with that sweep of Oakland. They've fallen to nine and ten. Um, been on a bit of a struggle lately. Um, Angels have been, you know, so so at that five hundred record. But Seattle and Oakland, how about them? Oakland, we expected because they're always making noise every year. But the Seattle Mariners, twelve and eight. Wonder if they can keep that up. Yeah, they start. They seem to start every year hot, but I don't know if they're for real or not this year because of what they've done to the Red Sox, who were also a first place team. I want to say it's real just because I feel bad for their fans never winning anything. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't know how they can keep this up. Just peeping up at the score right now, they're up six to one in the top of the ninth. Um, so if they hold on, that'll be two out of the first three of this series. Um, Chris Flexen threw the ball really well for them today. But yeah, I, I don't know if they can. I mean, it's especially because they haven't even had Kyle Lewis. He's been banged up. Should be coming off the DL sometime soon, but Seager, his numbers don't look amazing, but he's hitting the ball hard. I think he was in the top three of hard hit rate with him and Mitch Haniger and J.D. Martinez. Obviously. Yeah, I mean, um, I'd love to see, I'd love to see Seager, like, because he's getting to the end of his career. I'd love to see him make the playoffs. Oh, no one deserves it more. I mean, for a guy that's been toiling that long, being an underrated superstar for their team, yeah. Be yeah, he's been one of him. the he's been one of the best third basemen in the league for a long time. We talk yeah. about Arenado, Chapman, um, Machado, I guess, um, as like the best defensive guys. He's up there. Him and Longoria are both up there. Very, very, very underrated player. And yeah, he's he's getting a little older now, so it seems like his window of having chances to make the playoffs might be closing a bit. But yeah, it would be a lot of fun to see the Mariners keep it up. Um, so we'll see what happens there. The A's, though, 13-7, yeah. and seven, been on 13 fire of late. They they haven't lost in the last 13 games. I don't yep. know how you do that. It's just incredible. Led by my guy, Mitch Moreland. A um, couple <laughs> walk-off hits. Had two home run game against the Twins the other day. Twins and them was a great series. Mm -hmm. uh, Twins are a good yeah. team. Those A's are just unreal right now. Yeah. I, I don't know what else. To, there's nothing much you can say for them. They're on fire. They're not yeah. going to lose. Is Jesus Lazaro might be becoming the guy we thought he would be in 2020. Um, you know, he certainly didn't have a bad rookie season or his first season in rotation. He came up in the pen in 19. Certainly wasn't a bad year, but it wasn't as good as we had hoped for. But he's looking like he might be the man right now. Yeah. And I mean, like the Rays have always been, this shows their depth because Chapman and Olsen aren't hitting well. Hmm. And those are two guys that have usually been in the middle of their lineup hitting. Yeah, that's that's a great point you make there. Um, yeah, how can you not love their lineup? I mean, they got Elvis Andrews in the nine hole most of the time. That's like having a second leadoff hitter. Yeah, they got Lariano who just, he just hits. He just oh. hits and he's also one of the best defensive players I've ever seen. Yeah, he plays in a football stadium and catches everything. So yeah. that just shows you. Um, but yeah, another great year for the green and gold. Uh, yeah, another cool. team similar to Seattle that we didn't expect to be doing this over in the central 
Kansas City Royals, 11 and 7. I see. So the difference between them and the Mariners, I'd say, is I think the Royals, like both the Giants and Red Sox, are they're peaking right now. I don't think this is the year they win. But they're a real like contender in the coming years. Like they're legit. They still haven't called up um what's his name? Uh oh, Bobby Witt. Yeah, Witt. They haven't called up Witt. He's an animal. We saw that last year. Um, they had uh, Kyle Isbell up, too. He's another top prospect. Struggled a little bit, so they just sent him back down. But, yeah, I mean, you get him going. Jeez. It's a, honestly, this has been a quicker rebuild than I thought. They won in 2015, and they've just been rebuilding since then. Yeah. I mean, it's been tough for them as they've watched guys like uh, Hosmer and Moustakis walk out the door, but that's what a rebuild is. You have to say goodbye to people sometimes, and – I think uh, San Diego might have given Hosmer a little more money than they should have. But, I mean, San Diego's a great team. And Hosmer's certainly not a bad player by any means. Uh, yeah, no, you're right. It was, it was smart of the Royals to, rather than committing all that money, now they have it to spend on some more people if they want. Um, yeah, Salvador Perez is being Salvador Perez. They just extended him a little while ago, and he's doing his thing. Um Another guy, too, if Andrew Benintendi starts to break out for them, he hasn't gotten it going yet, but I know what he's capable of, yeah, and he's capable of being a really, really good two-hole hitter. So I really hope he turns it on soon. I, he was always one of my favorite guys in the Red Sox. Um, speaking of the Red Sox, the AL East, we want to talk about a backwards division. That's a backwards division. <laughs> no offense to the Red Sox, but the Red Sox are in first, the Yankees are in last. Um. That was never they, if anyone, I would have predicted the other way. Yeah, I didn't think the Red Sox would be a last place team, but I certainly didn't see this coming. The lineup is unreal. Um, JD yeah, Martinez is prime JD Martinez, if not the best season of his career. He's the best hitter in the league right now. Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody is hitting in that lineup. It's you know, even if the big guys aren't having a great night, someone else picks them up. Uh, Xander Bogart's hitting like over 400 still, he, or at least he was a couple of days ago. I'm not sure if he's still there. Um, Kika Hernandez and Marwin Gonzalez, such versatile guys. They've been really clutch of just slotting them in anywhere. And just like we've talked about with some other teams, if you can get Bobby Dahlbeck or Franchi Cordero or Hunter Renfro to turn it on, then it just makes this team even better. So the lineup is for real. Um, the pitching, there's certainly some good guys. Um, Eduardo Rodriguez, you got Chris Sale coming back from injury in maybe like the All-Star break or so. So that'll be nice because um, Garrett Richards and Martin Perez have <laughs> been struggling up and down a little bit. And I still think the best pitcher is in AAA right now with Tanner Houck. Yeah, so coming from like a perspective where I'm obviously not a fan, their lineup's insane. We, we kind of expected that, I'd say. I don't know how much this but yeah, we expected them exactly up. the pitching is a big question mark i'd probably say sales the biggest x factor x factor for that team um i think if this mariners series has shown us anything it's that they can't just rely on the bats they need pitching like they had in the beginning of the season so you i would definitely say, use another piece in the bullpen um yeah adam Montavino, the hope was that he could be that guy but it's been a little bit of a bumpy ride so far also, I don't know how I failed to mention Rafael Devers because he might be the most underrated hitter in all the game. Um, yeah, but he can't field to save his life. Well, he's gotten a little better this year. He had a nice play the other night where he like slid to the side for a ball and one-hopped it uh, to Dahlbeck. And that was a play that I feel like a couple years ago it would have been a bad throw. Even though it was one hop, it was right directly where it needed to be. So better than it seems like he might be stepping field. up a little bit. It's better than throwing it away, that's for sure. Yeah. No, um, I think they could definitely be – I th we, I mean, we had talked about this before the season. I think they're going to peak 22-23. That's when they're going to start becoming the contender. We know that we know they've been. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I think this year they might be able to sneak into a wild card. I don't think the Yankees can sustain, sustain losing like they are. And the Rays are the Rays. Yeah. The Rays are the Rays, 10-10, and 10, but, I mean – their roster doesn't even look that amazing right now. If you look at it, they're just trying. They're waiting for Franco. I think that's what they're doing. Yeah, no, they are. Um, they're also waiting for Luis Patino and Shane McClanahan. Yeah. 
I think I talked about this on a recent show, but it's just a service time manipulation, I guess, or they feel they're not ready. I don't know. But they were both in the postseason rosters last year. So yeah. I think they could be huge X factors as opposed to some of the guys they have in the rotation now. Um, so, you know, I think that they seemed like a 500 team to me coming in, but we'll see what happens. Um, they always have that magic. Randy is being Randy. When they get G-Man Troy back, he always brings <laughs> the energy, so that'll be good. And Glasnow. So, Glasnow developed a slider, and now he's unhittable. Oh, my God. Glass now has gone to another level. It's ridiculous. I think the whiff rate, he's thrown his curveball only 12% this year, but he's thrown it He's thrown it 47 times. 41 of them were two strike counts. The whiff rate is over 50%. <laughs> yeah, that's just unreal. He is an absolute god. He's so, the Rays were right, clearly, keeping him over the other two. Yeah, I guess so. Snell hasn't done anything amazing so far for the Padres. I mean, you know, I'm sure he will, but yeah, yeah. it's um, now we should probably go out to the NL West because, you know, obviously that's an insane. Let's do it. Talk about a, it's, it's not backwards. I wouldn't say it's backwards because we knew the bottom two teams were going to be the Rockies and Diamondbacks. Sorry, guys. We did, but yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> but Rockies, great stadium, though. Diamondbacks, too. That new All-Star but, game logo. That's very nice. It's actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie. The MLB like didn't that. mess that one up. <laughs> if they did it good. Um, the Dodgers are in first. However, they might not be in first for long with how their lineup's hitting. No, it's it's ice cold right now. Um, Turner's really the only guy that's still getting hits for them. Yeah, no. Uh, Turner's been on fire to start the season. Um, Kershaw's been looking like vintage Kershaw, so their pitching isn't to worry about. But, like, Seager, Betts, uh, Bellinger's injured. Um those guys, like their big, their big guys, aren't hitting. Yeah, I mean they're having some names in their lineup that you certainly didn't think you'd see much of, like AJ Pollock sitting in the five hole for them a lot of the times, and we didn't, hadn't even seen much of him last year. Um, you got like Luke Rayley in there, um, calling up a lot of people. Yeah, it's not the traditional Dodger. Zach McKinstry got off to a great start though. Uh, props to him because yeah, he's still I don't think many awesome. people were familiar with his name before this season. Yeah. Oh, Gavin Lux too. He's injured. Muncy's not hitting. But yeah. no, you're right. McKinstry's doing awesome. But Good for him. it's even though they have the best record in the league, there are still some concerns out there in SoCal for the Dodgers. So especially because um the team in second place in the NLS has the second best record in the MLB. How about those Giants? One as our resident giant expert, tell people how they're getting it done. So they're pitching. I believe they have the fourth best ERA in uh, the MLB. Uh, the most saves. Um, Jake McGee's doing great as the closer. He's only has one blown save, but it was a t- it was a tough, tough blown save. But whatever. Um, they just they've taken the first two from the Marlins. They have five shutouts this year, all caught by Kirk Casale. Five different pitchers. That's the first time that's ever happened for a catcher to have five consecutive of five different pitchers. The record six consecutive uh, shutouts, but I'm not sure that's going to get. I, I don't know. I could get broken. I guess. Um, Posey has power. That's something we haven't seen since probably 2016. I'd say he got his hip fixed uh, after taking the year off last year, and he already has four home runs on the year. He's batting. I think he's batting 303. Um, Ustremski, he's kind of been slumping to start the year, but he did just have a two-run jack uh, last night, to uh, which ended up being the game-winning home run. Um, Longoria is doing Longoria things. Flo- Wilmer Flores and Donovan Solano, they're great utility guys. I love them so much. Yeah, I was definitely going to mention Solano because he's so underrated. Yeah, and then, of course, Alex Dix, the big bat in left field. He's just... They put him in, and he seems to hit a home run when when he needs to. So that's great. And you can't forget Brandon Crawford. He's having an offensive resurgence. Oh no, that's he's best. Yeah, he's seeing he's the best him defensive. and Cozy doing what they're doing must just be oh, such a beautiful sight for you. It's great. I mean, I wish Bob Mariner was doing good too, but that kind of makes me glad they didn't resign him. But um, no, Crawford's the best defensive shortstop in the league. That's I can't. I, you can't dispute that. Oh, no. I mean, his track record speaks for itself. He's an amazing guy out there. He's got, like, three gold gloves. 
he's just insane. And yeah, Bumgarner was a tough one, but sometimes those are the decisions that need to be made if you want to keep winning. Yeah. Oh, I should mention this. The ERA of the rotation is fourth best, and Cueto's been injured since his first start. So they're right. Oh, Alex Wood, zero ERA. No. That was such a nice signing for them. Yeah. No, he's at like 0. 0.5 or something. He went back to the Dodgers last year, kind of found what he needed to. Go kind over to the sold. rival. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Kevin Gosman, our ace, we didn't, no one knew if they were going to sign him because they thought he was going to get a ton of money. He wanted to come back and, um, he's got like a three area. He's pitching out of his mind, but they can't see He's there to Grom. They can't seem to score when he pitches. Mm. Well, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say because we, we've said it all for DeGrom already because it's just, it doesn't even make much sense how your best pitcher yeah. can never score for him. Uh, I don't know. Um, they've also been pinch hitting um, one of their pit, uh, dis, Difiscalzi. I think that's how you say his name. Disco they've been funny. pinch, yeah, Dis Discofani. Sorry, I'm on bad. No, you're um, good. they've been, he's been pinch hitting as a pitcher. Um, when they because they've been running out of bench players. That sounds like a Gabe Kapler thing to do. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. It hasn't worked, but it's just hilarious to watch. Yeah. No, that's good stuff. They got they got this uh, two rookies who throw a hundred now who just made their debuts last week. Oh yeah. Um, so watch out. Yeah, it's only a game back. No, you know we thought they'd be a good team, but being in contention with the Dodgers right now, okay, I see you. I think I said for Red Sox and Giants, I said wild card team before the season. I mean. I don't now. I don't know if the Giants will overtake the Dodgers, but especially because if their bats wake up, they're unstoppable. Yeah, that would be a lot to ask for. But if still. they can hold off the Padres, they get that two, the guaranteed two spot, and the Padres are a wild card. That's very possible with how they're playing. No doubt. Um, and the Central and even the East right now are really weak, so could be seeing a lot of teams coming out of that West because the Padres. It's been another weird. Up and down year for them. Hugh Darvish has been awesome. Musgrove mm-hmm. has done a great job. Um, having some kind of series with the Dodgers last weekend and so far this weekend. Those are so fun to watch. I know I always tune into the Padres broadcast here, Don Arcillo. Um, <laughs> he had that clip getting so excited about that little fight between um, Santana on the Dodgers and um forget who it was that he hit. Uh, but anyway, they were yeah, jawing no, at each I other. Know, yeah, it's he's a great guy. Yeah, and I love I love Don Arcello so much. The Sox letting him go is like the worst thing to ever happen. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. No, oh. the Padres have been they've been weird. You're right. Tati, it, Tatis 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 yeah. made a lot of errors and hasn't been hitting a ton. Granted, he did just have two home runs last night, so it's nice to see he might be heating back up. But he hasn't hasn't been himself so far. He's had that shoulder injury, trying to figure out. Had to play through it, I guess, because it seems like he's still not at 100%. Although um, I did just hit two home runs last night. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's a caveat to this. It's, he might be getting back to himself, but. No, I, the comp I see to him is Bogarts when he was younger. They were like, oh, I don't know if he can stay at short. The difference is, I'm not sure Tatis can actually stay at short. He's fast enough to roam the outfield. That's, that's true. That might be a good possibility. Um, can never have too many outfielders anyway, so. Make him like a Acuna type player. Just hits bombs and roams the outfield. Yeah. Um, you know, if the Padres can get back Austin Nola too, he was a huge factor for them last year behind the dish, um, picking him up in the trade from the Mariners. And yeah, just get some other guys heated up. They got all the potential in the world. Uh, Mark Melanson, how about him? I think he's tied with McGee for the league lead in saves. He's been absolutely dominant. The curveball has been biting real good. Um, so that's yeah, so nice he pitches well when he's not on the Giants. <laughs> <laughs> Big waste of 40 mil. Well, if it makes you feel any better, he didn't do too hot in Boston either. Oh, uh, that's true. In Atlanta, he wasn't bad though. No, he was a very steady, very steady closer for the Braves. And yeah, he's been having the best year of his career. I think he's like 35 or 36 and yeah, doing he's what doing he's great. doing there. Um, so next division, um, we talk, we the Central, it's the Reds. 
everyone else, basically. The Cardinals, though, I will say, the Cardinals offense makes zero sense. Yeah. They don't hit, and then they hit, and then they don't hit for a few games, and then they hit one game. It that doesn't... national series was a microcosm of their entire season because I think it was like a one nothing game. Max Scherzer had shut them down. And then Corbin did decent against them, but it was like twelve to ten, then one to nothing. So yeah, exactly. They're very. They don't make sense because they have a great lineup, and like Molina's hitting now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but it's a I lot don't of guys understand. like there. I don't know if it's their pick because like Flaherty's good. We know that he hasn't been himself, but him and um Castillo both haven't been amazing. Yeah. And it looks like St. Louis made a good call uh, shedding Fowler's salary in the trade to the Angels because now he's out for the year. It's true. But, um, and the Brewers, like we said, if they make a wild card, look out because pitching reigns supreme. Uh, yeah. But the Cubs started Talk about weird cold. teams. Stub- Cubs started maybe the coldest I've ever seen teams start, besides the Yankees, of course. Um, <laughs> have to throw that in there. Javi Baez before last night was like hitting like not even a hundred. Like he yeah, was, he's bad, bad. He might've woken up last night though. Had that lefty home run last week. That was electric too. Um, but, uh, yeah, but no, but yeah, I, I don't know what to make of them. The like, NL central is, I think is the opposite of the NL East. It's it five bad teams. That's going to make this division close. The NL East is five great teams. Yeah, they're just all beating up on each other right now. That's that's the thing. And the team that is the most unexpected, it's not even the Mets. We we kind of hype the Mets up. The Phillies. That bullpen is something else. Dombrowski might have fixed it. He's ruining that narrative of all he does is spend money and spoil bullpens, which I didn't, never love that narrative anyway. Um, because he, he spends did... money. We know that. But well, yeah. he's doing it. Yeah. But, yeah, no, he made some nice moves rebuilding it. And, you know, they started off well. They're only 3-7 and seven in their last 10, unfortunately, for them. But, yeah, the Phillies are dangerous. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, no. Um, the Marlins need to bring up Sanchez. Their pitching sucks right now. Um, but their lineup's not doing bad. Except yeah, for against Sandy the Giants. Alcantara can't do it all for them. Yeah, and he, he pitched well last night. He has just got the best of them on one pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's still a young guy, after all. Um, Mets, like we said, it's the grounds world. We're living in it. Um, well, except for the Mets, they're not, because they can't score for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Nationals, Another they're cold. Another odd but... team. Yeah, they're, they should Scherzer be. Scherzer is being Scherzer, no doubt about that. But Strasburg's velocity was way down. Then he hit yeah. the IL. And, yeah. you know, the thing is, I thought that they made the right move in – you know, seemed like they had to choose between Strauss and Rendon. I always am a proponent of starting pitching, so I thought they made a good move in re-signing Strauss. Hasn't paid off for them so far because he's been on the IL for most of the last two years, but mm-hmm. he's such an electric guy to watch when he's doing well, so I really hope he can bounce back soon. Um, yeah. Uh, Patrick Corbin on the been, IL. Yeah, Patrick Corbin has been up and down. He was not good his first couple starts. Did solid against St. Louis. Um, Eric Fetty and Joe Ross, not many people thought that they would, there weren't high expectations for them, let's just say, but they've done a nice job so far. Yeah, no, they're a weird team for sure. Um, I think they'll get back, uh, back to it. I did see Strauss or Scherzer could get traded if they're really bad, which I don't honestly think it would be a bad move because they did just win the world series and their pitching is kind of old. So maybe they get some prospects for them. Yeah, I mean... They... Now, if the Dodgers got him, I'd quit life because that's just unfair. <laughs> oh, God. And somehow it's going to happen. I know it. Well, you know, A.J. Preller wants to get every good pitcher out there, so he'd go game busters for it. He's like playing fantasy baseball. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I need pitching. I got the lineup. I need pitching. And he's just trading for pitching. Well, Denelson Lamette is hurt. It's forearm. You don't want it to be Tommy John, but sometimes that's a precursor to Tommy John. That's kind of why they brought in Snell, too. Yeah. And they got Clevenger coming back next year. So we'll see what happens. Get Scherzer as, like, the veteran on that. Oh, my God. Scherzer, Darvish, Clevenger, Snell. 
I would never watch another game of baseball. Musgrove, Musgrove would be the least. five. Musgrove would be the five. Ridiculous. Brian Weathers, Mackenzie Gore. Oh, yeah, you're just our depth starters. Like, we thought the Dodgers rotation was good with Price coming out of the bullpen. No, How that's like Price five all-stars. The, getting saves back-to-back days last week. I just love that he's, like, just like, yeah, I'll do whatever. Like, I don't – I never – Loved him because he always complained about like Fortnite and stuff and like played it still. And he's a Dodger now, but I like that he's a team player. He is. He's definitely a good teammate. We'll give him that much. Um, and yeah, he's just like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'll go be go be a shutdown reliever now. Why not? Yeah. Speaking of um, just like fantasy worlds, um, MLB, the show 21 came out uh, this past week. I've been playing it too much. I should have waited till after finals to get it. Yeah. I've been just playing a lot. Like I'm already at the all-star break in my uh, road <laughs> to October. Um, my two way guys doing awesome, but that deserves, I was like, mm, should it be like that hyped? Like everyone's like, it's the best sports game ever. The show in general. No, it is. It's amazing. The graphics are great. It's awesome. Well, we love to talk about marketing and it was a great decision to bring it to Xbox because that opened it up to a bunch of people that had never played it before. And yeah, exactly. Going to need to, you know, lock my Xbox up and give it to somebody during finals week. So I am not playing it then. Just going to not go to my room. I don't know how else to stop it. But all summer that will be electric. Yeah. Between we'll, we'll go outside a little bit. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll have a good balance. Yeah. We'll keep, We'll play it outside. Oh, that's there you that's go. Not a bad I idea. hacked. I hacked it. Um, that's big brain. Yeah. All right. That's. I think that's it. Right. Well, yeah. That is our show. Keep an eye on UConn Xavier this weekend. Fairfield's making more noise. Check out game two of that series. And, yep, college baseball and the MLB continues to just be awesome. Yeah. Um. Thanks, guys. Um. Hope to see you next week. Yeah, we'll see you then. Thanks for listening. But